the singularity, the point of no return, where basic physics becomes mostly irrelevant, gravity infinite, and destruction inevitable. That holds true for one type of singularity, but what about the other one? What about the technological singularity? The point where the intelligence of the machines we created outweighs our own. Surprisingly, they have more in common than you would think. The term technological singularity was coined by Werner Vinge, a mathematician at San Diego State University in 1993. Even back then, Vinge foresaw an eventuality where machines would outsmart the humans. The reason for his theory back then was related to something called Moore's Law. Moore's Law states that every 18 months the processing power of computers doubled. Due to this law, anyone could assume that eventually the processing of power of a computer would become so immense that it could simulate a brain. Or could it? But before we truly understand why an AI can or cannot work, one has to understand what an AI truly is. As of today, in 2016, there are two types of theoretical AIs and one AI that we've already created. The type that we've created is called Artificial Narrow Intelligence, or ANI. An ANI can be as simple as a search algorithm on Google, YouTube, or even Facebook when it suggests friends. ANI can also be Siri on your phone, or Watson, the IBM supercomputer. In general, an ANI is good at one specific thing. In fact, an ANI can be better and likely is better than humans at their one specific thing, such as Google's DeepMind computer defeating the person who many consider to be the best all-time Go player, Lee Sedol. However, an ANI is usually not good at other things besides their specialities. DeepMind may be good at Go, but it is not good at chess or checkers. The next type is Artificial General Intelligence, or AGI. AGI is the next step in terms of artificial intelligence and will likely be the most difficult to create. AGI would be an intelligence that is roughly as smart as an intelligent human being. It might not beat the world champion Go player, but it could play a good match. But it wouldn't be playing Go, because once we've created an AGI, it wouldn't take long for it to develop itself. This process would result in the next type of AI, artificial superior intelligence. ASI is the singularity. Which brings us back to the other definition. In a gravitational singularity, gravity goes all wonky and infinite. In the technological singularity, the ASI's intelligence will create thoughts that to us seem wonky, and its intelligence infinite. To explain why this happens, you have to take a step back. Think about the intelligence of a chimpanzee. The smartest chimps can understand basic tools like using a rock to break open a nut. But a chimpanzee, even a chimpanzee that was a thousand times smarter than the average chimp, would be unable to put together an IKEA desk. It may understand that the desk exists and that the people who put it together exist, but it could never understand how it could be put together. The same goes for us in comparison to the ASI. It would create thoughts and objects that would be unable to comprehend as an average human. And that's only soon after it becomes an ASI. After enough time has passed, the ASI, to us, would be what we are to an ant or a butterfly. This brings us to the problem that a lot of people have with AI. It's a scary thought to have a being that has the ability to do, well, anything. It wouldn't be limited by human imagination or procrastination. It would be able to easily outsmart any safeguard that we put in place, and because of Moore's Law, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Or is it? Like I said earlier, Moore's Law states that computational power doubles every 18 months. This is possible because of how computational power is achieved. It is achieved using transistors. Transistors are tiny parts which allow or disallow current to flow through a circuit. The more transistors that you can fit into a circuit board, the more options you have to make a computation. This relates to Moore's Law because every 18 months, the number of transistors that engineers were able to put onto a processor was doubled. Currently, we can fit 1 to 2 billion transistors onto one circuit board. Compared to 10 years ago, that's a ridiculously large amount. But since we are shrinking the transistors to half their size each time, they've very quickly gotten extraordinarily small. So small 
that the transistors are approaching the size where they will be unable to decide whether or not they should carry a current. This is due to something called quantum tunneling. Quantum tunneling is where a particle passes through a barrier that it would not be able to classically due to it acting as a wave at the quantum level. So due to this process, Moore's law is effectively over. Unless we can find out a new way to code computers, the way we can do this is something called quantum computing. In classical coding, computers are coded using bits, which allow for either on, represented by 1, and off, represented by 0. Quantum coding uses qubits, which allow for a superposed state, somewhere between 0 and 1, or possibly entirely 0 and 1 at the same time. Understanding how this is able to happen is a long and arduous process, but the important part is that, for example, 10 qubits can represent the information of 2 to the power of 10 regular bits. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that a computer will go expressly faster if, it, if it's using qubits, unfortunately. Quantum computing works differently from classical computing, and if you want to watch Netflix or browse Facebook, the classical computer would be the better choice. But if you want to mess around with quantum mechanics, then the quantum computer is the choice for you. So in reality, quantum computing doesn't solve the problem with the singularity. You may be asking, how are we supposed to develop an AGI if we can't make our computers faster? And that's a good question that I don't have an answer for. The most likely way that we'll create the AGI at this point is either a massive breakthrough akin to the first discovery of transistors, or pure dumb luck. Either way, the AGI seems much further away now than it did a few years ago.